So SGLT2 inhibitors are the new kid on the block. Very good drug, and despite being, uh, you know, knowing Ralph DeFranzo, who is the author of the Omnia Octet, um, I, I'm going to respectfully disagree with Ralph on this with Dr. DeFranzo uh, because of the fact that I don't believe the kidney is broke in the beginning of the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Now, I don't dispute that once you've had hyperglycemia for many, many years, and especially if it's uncontrolled, the kidney will break. Your renal threshold will climb. I do not dispute that. But in pre-diabetes, in the early start of diabetes, the kidney renal threshold is perfectly normal. So I don't believe the kidney's broke. So with that being said, SGLT2s, as we know, they lower that renal threshold. So is your patient at risk for UTIs? Do, do you have a female who has been having reoccurring vaginal infections or urinary tract infections? Don't start that person on, on an SGLT2. Someone who maybe is a heavy drinker, you know, because if we think about it, SGLT2 inhibitors, they will dehydrate you. So if you're not replenishing those fluids, you're gonna dehydrate, which then causes increase in blood glucose. Because of course, less water, more sugar, that's where bacteria love to have a party. So you wanna make sure that the patients are well hydrated. The other risk potential for this is um, patients maybe taking some type of a diuretic. You know, so again, dehydration. We have older patients who don't drink water to begin with. Their beverage of choice is coffee all day long. And so again, dehydration. So again, knowing your patient, what are their, their beverage consumption like? What is their risk potential for the infection? And then not prescribing these drugs in that setting. You know, the other thing too, risk for fall, because you get dehydrated, hypotensive, you now have a risk for fall. So caution in older adults that are at that risk.